Many people from around the world have now, fortunately, been presented with and hopefully convinced enough thanks to platforms such as YouTube, particularly Egyptian constructional revisionists, to now realize that there are many as yet unexplained feats of ancient engineering which literally drenches these magnificent structures and its equally mysterious sandstone plateau below. Yet we further expose many other indicative features, which were seemingly impossible feats of ancient engineering, which we hope has helped a lot of people to realize that there are many fallacies in historical doctrine, many gaps in academic and curricular understandings, many things dismissed with flaky strategies and theories which have again and again, thanks to modern computer engines, been proven as impossible maneuvers. It seems many people, and a considerable amount of money, goes into keeping a stranglehold over the pyramid's possible origins and original function, inevitably shrouding these structures in a veil of secrecy. In addition to the original pyramid blocks and the enormous megalithic exoskeleton visible in a few obscure areas of the pyramid's lower regions, we have also in the past put forward the hypothesis that due to the advanced nature of many of the pyramid's casing stones and the drastic differences in ages they appear to be, all made with the same type of rock, thus to display such drastically different levels of erosion, is undeniably evidence of them being installed at many different times. Yet although claimed as being built within known history, no documentation of the installation of the blocks, or indeed any explanation as to how these pyramids were built, all remain elusive. Several different styles were put upon these monuments, we feel, at vastly different times within antiquity. We posit that they are clear proofs of a number of past civilizations' conservation efforts, but due to these compelling and visible proofs, one has to consider that the Great Pyramid's origins are vastly more prehistoric than could ever be publicly accepted, and due to these features having seemingly survived due to what we suspect was a number of considerable efforts to shield them from the environment by a number of different, extremely ancient, yet all highly capable, yet now lost civilizations, which we have identified in previous work as that of the Cyclopean Civilization and the Polygonal Civilization. But I digress. Many of you who have donated towards the channel and to reserve a book may be wondering when the channel's accompanying books will be published. However, I assure you Mystery History intends to go in-depth regarding his and other findings surrounding not only the ancient pyramids, but also the many other compelling, seemingly impossible ancient legacies found throughout Giza's plateau and many museums, and many other controversial sleuth-gathered factors from throughout antiquity. Creating the type of evidence-driven, visually illustrated examinational content in which the books will be exclusively focused upon. All of these factors are reasons why the books will not be written hastily. As my knowledge grows, so does my understanding of what makes ancient ruins so enigmatic, and I believe, the larger my research, the better the go-to guides will eventually be. I just wanted to reassure you that Mystery History has not forgotten about any of you. Returning to our opening statement, however, Many are now aware that there does not exist a valid explanation for the construction of the pyramids. Even if one had unlimited slaves, it is not a case of muscle, but rather a lack of space in which to utilize such. Yet what many who have not explored Giza and the surrounding connected ruins on foot are often oblivious of the astonishing array of ancient temples, clearly dating from the pyramid builders, not only lost for eons in the sand of the Sahara but has preserved some in astonishing conditions. Ancient Egypt, its great pyramids, its eight-sided Cheops, its incredibly well-preserved, once long-engulfed temples, and the inexplicable stonework of ancient Egypt is but one of many areas from a world of ruins, which we not only intend to unravel as much as possible, but it is an investigational struggle, which we find highly compelling. The Great Pyramids Although undoubtedly one of the greatest ancient sites upon Earth, many feel that when these enigmatic structures are one day inevitably deciphered and their subsequent significance realized, 
This importance to the development of man will utterly eclipse that which has already been unraveled here upon our planet. It is a site that we predict will encounter numerous astonishing discoveries that will undoubtedly be played down or discredited by mainstream academia and media alike. Interestingly, however, regardless of our suspicions, an international research group's finds have seemingly been shared worldwide by the same organizations we so often find ourselves here upon our channel accusing of conspiracy. This research team apparently applied methods of theoretical physics to the site in an effort to investigate the electromagnetic response of the Great Pyramids to radio waves. In an exercise reminiscent of those which unraveled astonishing characteristics of the Bosnian pyramids has produced results that, predictably, since their discovery, scientists have stated were supposedly predicted under certain resonance conditions. They now state that the pyramid was predicted to concentrate electromagnetic energy in its internal chambers and under the base. This supposed initial prediction was made regardless of the fact that not a single claim to these events had ever been made within a single thesis funded by academia. Conveniently, this research group plans to use the theoretical results to design nanoparticles capable of reproducing similar effects in the optical range. Such nanoparticles may be used to develop sensors and highly efficient solar cells. The study was published in the Journal of Applied Physics. It seems to us that those in control of the production lines of mankind are seemingly aware of the technological prowess of the Great Pyramids, yet appear to be suppressing such discoveries in favor of financial control. In other words, the people who have permitted the release of these finds are the same people controlling the flow of information and technological development of our species. Quote, the Egyptian pyramids have always attracted great attention. We as scientists were interested in them as well, so we decided to look at the Great Pyramid as a particle dissipator of radio waves resonantly. Due to the lack of information about the physical properties of the pyramid, we had to use some assumptions. For example, we assume that there are no unknown cavities inside, and the building material had the properties of an ordinary limestone evenly distributed in and out of the pyramid. With these assumptions made, we obtained interesting results that can find important practical applications, says Dr. S. C. Andre Evluchin, scientific supervisor and coordinator of the research. We feel the research is dubious, not only due to the fact that it has been shared within the same mainstream media who we feel have for a long time been funded to tell an entirely different story but also due to the attempted conviction that there are no chambers left to be uncovered within the pyramid. Is there something within the pyramid that, no matter how hard certain powers try, they cannot seem to hide? Is this the reason for this conclusion and subsequent research being so widely covered? We find the discovery and subsequent coverage to be highly suspicious. The Queen's Chamber which lays within the Great Pyramid of Khufu, more commonly known as Cheops, has astonished, shocked, and mystified Egyptologists since its mysterious existence was discovered. The intrigue into this elusive chamber, along with its mysterious adjacent shafts, comes as no surprise once one understands the anomalous characteristics of their construction. As we have already covered before, Massive cover-ups have been suspected as taking place surrounding this mysterious chamber since its discovery. Strange shaft tunnels, set at a 45-degree incline, no larger than 20 centimeters in diameter, run away from this room, and no one seems to know why. Not only would these ancient shafts require being hermetically sealed during the pyramid's construction to stop them from becoming blocked, but the excruciating effort that would have gone into making them becomes all the more of a confusing undertaking once you realize they were not even connected to the chamber, but hidden 40 centimeters away from entering the tomb within the walls, completely invisible from the inside of the burial room located deep within the structure. 
Cheops, noticeably being the only pyramid to have ever been constructed with such shafts, making their addition a popular mystery within Egyptian history. One leads out from the subterranean chamber, two lead out from a termination point some 40 centimeters from the wall of the so-called Queen's Chamber, or now popularly suspected to be that of an alien tomb among ancient alien specialists, and two from the King's Chamber above. Here is where our story becomes interesting. Rudolf Gantenbrick, famous for actually discovering the blocking door within one of the Queen's chamber shafts, which could lead to an as yet undisclosed tomb, has also made other curious discoveries within the Great Pyramid. Discoveries which could only be explained by modern covert explorations of tunnels that were supposedly to that point unexplored. Gantenbrick's cache being but one example of these mysterious finds, deep within the tunnel systems in the royal chamber, at a 90-degree turn going vertically upwards, a pile of papers, possibly wrapped artifacts, weighed down with a small piece of timber or stone, possibly another artifact, was discovered by Gantenbrick's robot. Also, during initial location attempts to find access tunnels leading to the Queen's chamber, Several blocking stones required removal. After the removal of the seventh block, a modern-era hexagonal steel rods were discovered discarded upon the tunnel's floor. Each section of the hexagonal steel rods measures 2.7 meters in length and was fitted with a round socket, which allowed them to be joined to the next section. In one of the lower shafts in 1872, Wayneman Dixon found three more objects which could be considered proof of prior covert exploration of the mysterious northern shafts. A copper grappling hook, about 5 centimeters in length, accompanied by a small, gray-green stone ball, and a broken-off piece of a square wooden slat or rod, about 13 centimeters long, the wood would today be the most intriguing of his finds. These artifacts suspected to be remnants of the grave robber's tools, could have been carbon dated, Yet this fragment is the only one of the three to now be missing out of the London Museum's collection. Unfortunately, in his writings, Dixon doesn't say in which of the two lower shafts he actually found the objects, but he mentions them in connection with a northern one. Not only did these obviously highly intelligent people leave evidence of how they must have gotten in, but also traces upon the previous untouched ancient walls of the shafts within Cheops clearly left by their previous robotic technologies. Other square metal rods have been recovered, along with other artifacts discarded within some tunnel systems deep within the ancient structures. Meaning these guys got to the treasures way before we did. Interestingly, reported evidence of covert excavations continues to this day, heavy-duty electrical supplies discreetly running into and trailing deep into the pyramids have been noticed and photographed by some of the more astute tourists. Witnesses to the sounds of heavy machinery being used beneath the site is also frequently reported, yet rarely followed up. It seems it's not a question of whether brilliant minds have achieved the seemingly impossible in penetrating these secret layers, but more a question of how and what astonishing finds have possibly been kept concealed. Egypt Undoubtedly, one of the most controversial places for modern history to try to keep the control of in regards to its origin, its true age, or original builder. When one either visits the Giza Plateau and is lucky enough to gaze upon these three great pyramids, or merely able to peer upon them through their computer screens, the first thing that will usually cross one's mind is awe and amazement. Yet this is often instinctually followed by an air of wonder, a curiosity as to how these miraculous structures were built, who could have possibly built them, and most importantly of all, why. Yet these questions, and indeed the pursuit of their answers, has been a mission for many well-funded deceptive individuals, for many years, to work very hard to distract you from either asking or pursuing as personal line of inquiry. For example, the Golden Mask of King Tut, along with the many other undoubtedly spectacularly valuable artifacts 
encrusted with precious metals and jewels that can be seen littering Egypt in its many museums and in the mountains of literature, books, and touring exhibits, which are published, pushed, and permitted in regards to this spectacular area of human history. The arrival of the last of King Tut's chariots at the Gem, which stands for the Grand Egyptian Museum late last month, was an exciting event for archaeologists worldwide and a source of pride for Egyptians. We moved today the sixth and the last chariot of King Tutankhamun from the, from the military museum in the Citadel, which was there since 1987, to the gem. So we were keen to show you the moving of this uh, very nice artifact and the packing and unpacking uh, method, uh, professional method you are using by my colleagues in the ministry. The Tutankhamun exhibit, comprising about 5,000 pieces, will display for the first time all of Tutankhamun's artifacts in one place. Experts from around the world have been consulted on how best to preserve and display the collection. When museum workers accidentally knocked off the beard of King Tut's burial mask in 2015 and hastily glued it back on, there were fears that modern chemicals would cause permanent damage to the artifact. But scholars around the world put their heads together to save the golden mask. The museum will also be a venue for international conferences on Egyptology. There is something new always. We found out today in my talk, the family of Tutankhamun through DNA. How Tutankhamun died. No one murdered him. My excavation in the Valley of the Monks that we are doing right now, important excavation looking for the tomb of Archis in Amun. Maybe soon a tomb will be revealed in the Valley of the Monks or the Western Valley. Of the kings. Most of the artifacts in the Tutankhamun exhibit have been relocated from the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Their new home is only about two kilometers away from the place where the young pharaoh's tomb was discovered in 1922. Egyptian officials say the gem will be the world's largest archaeological museum when completed and will hold about 100,000 artifacts in total. We have now 3,000 employees and workmen working inside the project. We are respecting our schedule. We'll be ready from the engineering uh, part by December 2018, and we are deciding now the perfect time or the ideal timing for the partial opening. In addition to King Tut's exhibit, the museum will display objects related to some of the greatest historic Egyptian kings, such as Ramses II, Akhenaten, and Amenhotep III. The ancient Egyptians, although claimed as ingenious, were merely adaptive, just like the equally acclaimed Romans and Incas of Peru. These re-inhabitants merely rediscovered the creations of a far older, far more advanced predecessor, who I believe not only constructed these sanctuaries, which these well-studied ancient civilizations merely used to enable the flourishment of their own cultures, in turn, leaving a smorgasbord of architectural artifacts for funded academics to excavate and subsequently parade around, usually bombarding many individuals with deep insights into their lifestyles, culture, and death practices, are yet, as I would have predicted, nearly always absent, that which supports my posit. Any logical explanation or demonstration of how these people built these structures in which they once inhabited like a void in their academic study, one which is not only consistently ignored and concealed by these same academics, but are unknown facts to all of modern humanity to this day. This mystery is a result of the incredible nature of these structures, the precision involved in their constructions, and the enormity of some of the stones used in the building of the structures. Many of you may have seen my recent videos or be a keen follower of my work and, as such, are aware of the fact that due to my in-depth study of the unknowns regarding these sites worldwide and the collection and collaboration of the similarities and differentiabilities I have personally collected and categorized regarding many of these ancient structures, I have personally been able to establish a very strong evidence-based hypothesis regarding the identity of three separate lost civilizations, which I have established using signatures within their style of building, and by default differentiations in their styles of building, to unquestionably identify them as separate yet particular groups 
responsible for the different, unexplainable structures spanning the entire globe. Yet although these groups have indeed crossed paths, such areas as Aswan Quarry, and most significant to my own research in Italy, where the polygonal civilization built upon the Cyclopeans' work, allowing me to establish which preceded which, and although these groups have been established to have abandoned projects midway through, thus indicating that they came to a sudden and untimely demise due to cataclysm, the civilization responsible for the pyramids, and indeed the movement of the blocks at Baalbek in China, which all far exceed 1,000 tons, is yet another civilization which far predated all which I have already identified. These three civilizations are the Polygonal Civilization, the Cyclopean Civilization, and the Neolithic Civilization, each with their own unique building techniques and identifiable stone-cutting signatures in their technologies. The pyramid builders were unimaginably more capable than all three. And although the Neoliths, who indeed have created some astonishingly advanced ruins, could have quite possibly been a surviving remnant of this civilization, this digression is for another time. Though at sites such as Baalbek, the Trilithon, which contains stones over 1,000 tons, there are Cyclopean stones built atop the stones, and at other places in the world, polygonal masonry has been found, such as Axum in Ethiopia where the toppled obelisk is said by some to be in excess of 1,000 tons, I have never, and now strongly feel will never, find any indicative evidence of these civilizations building the footings under any of these gigantic megaliths, as they were not responsible for their creation or placement. Additionally, the civilization responsible for the pyramids, and these enormous megalithic blocks elsewhere, were also the civilization who created the false door, a mysterious rock-carved feature also found littering the now-exposed mega-metropolis found beneath the Guatemalan rainforest by penetrative radar. Taikal, part of this metropolis, the place where the plaque illustrating a past global cataclysm was once found, also has pyramids built solely leading to these false doors, with one found in Peru built into the only rock face containing a very peculiar crystal known for its resonance qualities in amplifying radio waves. I feel that much of the spectacles found in modern Egyptian museums are merely distractions from the really important truths which we should all be focusing on instead, such as the true age of the pyramids, structures which, in the past, I have also independently identified as still possessing three separate, identifiable stages of attempted casing stones for conservation, each significantly older or younger than each other, with the true exoskeleton of the structures made of stones far in excess of 1,000 tons. Join us next time, where I will expose the controlled opposition within the fringe fields of archaeology, which have stemmed from a growing pursuit for the truth of these facts, with a focus upon the water erosion hypothesis of the Great Sphinx, why it is a misdirection, and the Sphinx's true, original, undeniable identity, facts and truths exposed, which are undoubtedly highly compelling. The treasury of Atreus, also known as the Tomb of Agamemnon, is an astonishing ancient structure found on the Paganitsa Hill, Mycena, Greece, which, according to academia, dates back a mere 3,000 years. However, the supposed accomplishments of its bronze-wielding builders is predictably yet to be explained by those who have supposedly accurately dated the structure. Undoubtedly, the most compelling and thus contradictory feature of this build is the lintel. Along with other lesser-known megalithic blocks, which still litter the site, the structure's lintel found within the build is currently known to be the biggest ancient stone lintel in the world. This weight-bearing block, which bridges the door's opening, is still, regardless of clear erosion, 
an incredible 120 metric tons. An inconceivable weight for our ancestors placed a mere century ago, let alone our well-studied Bronze Age descendants, who are supposed to have been responsible for the quarrying and transportation of this ashlar stone, and then setting this enormous stone aloft more than 2 meters, perfectly placing it atop the structure's main opening. With an interior height of 13.5 meters and a diameter of 14.5 meters, it was the tallest and widest dome in the world for over a thousand years. The precision involved in the placement of these enormous stones once made the interior of the build appear polished smooth. Furthermore, above its astonishing lintel is another intriguing design feature in the shape of a pyramid. Also used within modern-day rafters of house roofs, this opening was incorporated specifically to channel excess weight away from the lintel. This design feature was realized as essential for structural integrity and was included to prevent the building from collapsing over time. This addition, we feel, could only have been made by members of a civilization who clearly had advanced technical knowledge of load-bearing architectural design and as such, is indicative of techniques far too advanced for that of our Bronze Age ancestors. This space, which is known as a relieving triangle, is meant to funnel the weight of the structure off the lintel and into the sides, preventing the lintel from cracking due to pressure. Furthermore, there have also long been rumors surrounding the site that it was originally found to have had an interior decorated with pure gold. Do these features sound like the work of our well-studied developing ancestors? Or perhaps, surviving work left by an accomplished group who were once part of an advanced, technologically capable civilization? We believe that the evidence found at the structure is simply unexplainable when attributed to a primitive people. As such, it is highly likely that the currently attested opinions in regards to its construction are inaccurate and seemingly conspiratorial. How did an ancient people incorporate such enormous stone blocks into their long-lasting precision builds without the involvement of advanced weightlifting technologies? How can certain fields of authoritative study expect critical thinking individuals to believe a purveyed account for the origins of such inexplicable ancient sites, and indeed the civilizations responsible, being that of a group just beginning to understand the science of producing smelted bronze? How were they capable of such precision with such gigantic weight-bearing architecture? It is, understandably, a highly controversial ruin, which is clearly highly compelling.